guys. Um, the first thing I do is um, let me go grab my uh, my pencil highlighter red. There you go. The first thing I do, I go over a PowerPoint presentation, and there's um, pictures. I love pictures. One of the most important thing about this book, guys, and if you are to stay in our industry, are pictures. If you have no idea what uh, a receptacle is, which you guys know, or what a three-way switch is located, and how the contacts work inside it. Tons and tons of pictures. So that's why I'm a firm believer of books. And I have close to 800 books in my own personal library, technical books. You can't have enough books. If you're an electrical professional, you cannot have enough books. Did you guys hear me? Um, you can't. You just can't. Electrical. If you're going to be a professional in this field. Um, books have tons tons of information that um, I always say the only thing that I buy without regret when I buy things, you always spend a lot of money, so you kind of, um, is books. Only thing you, so books are great, great investment, guys. So I know some of you go sell these books at the end, and I, I encourage you strongly to keep them for your, own, for your own reference. So when you're working on a project and you forgot how many, every set, how many um, conductors do we need for a four-way switch, for example, which we do if we don't use it often, Refer to the books that you did with Chad. I remember we went over this. I can't remember what chapter. So you go there and you find it. Okay. Having said that, because we don't like telling electricians that, that much. So the NEC could look beside it that we have to identify all the conductors. The worst thing that could happen to you guys is you open the box and you have no idea which conductor is grounded, which conductor is ungrounded, and which conductor is a grounding. So we get into something called identification of conductors. Uh, we'll talk about switch as in turning lighting and controlling lighting circuits, switching as in controlling lighting circuits. A little bit about grounding and bonding um, for boxes. I will be talking about grounding and bonding for a long time because we have a whole presentation about grounding and bonding as we go through. Then we talk about the concept of induction heat. And why do we have to group all the conductors of the same circuit together? So that's a major, major concept. Um, now, in every circuit that we do in any power circuit, be it in Germany or, or the US or anywhere in the world, it's made out of three conductors. <laughs> Done. You know, you can go anywhere in the world and every branch circuit is made out of three conductors. You know, so the first conductor is called the ungrounding conductor. That's Mr. Hot, hot conductor. The other one is called the grounded conductor. This is Mr. Neutral, right? So these Mr. Hot and Mr. Neutral, the one they have the voltage on, the one that reference to it, and in between you tie the you tie your load, need to be identified. I identified as in color coding. So people, when they're looking at one conductor red, they know that this is 99.99 is an ungrounded conductor, a.k.a. hot. So big, big deal. Identification of types of toggle switches for controlling circuit, toggle switches, snap switches, AC and DC. Most of the time, we don't get involved too much into them. We use a lot of AC system, but if you have to use a DC switching, you have to make sure that your switch is rated for DC. That's all. Um, uh, select of a switch with the proper rating. So if the rating of a switch is from 120 volt into a 20 amp switches. Um, so if you're switching more than 20 amps, your switch have to be rated for that. That, that doesn't really take much to, um, and method of installation for these. Uh, operation of typical switching system um, from three-way switching into a four-way switching into a a double pole switching into a single way switch and so forth. Um, a neutral conductor must be added to the box. In 2011, guys, that was changed in 2011. Adam, I don't know if you guys went through it. If you have a switch, you are to bring a neutral to the switch. And I'm going to go over some wiring here. And I guarantee you, if you don't know these wiring, you will be always a... Uh, a, a, a fraction designer. I always say, if you don't have to be an electrician to be a designer, the more wiring you know, the better designer you will be, the better estimator you will be, the better project manager you will be. We are in the electrical industry. Our product is electricity. Um, the more you know about it, the better designer, estimator, project manager you will be. No question asked. Um, correct wiring. 
for switch peer code requirement, how do you do correct um, correct wiring connections for a different type of switching? And that's where the, we get into the three-way switching and so forth. Um, var various ways of bonding wiring devices to a box. Now we're getting into bonding to a box um, and grounding and bonding. We'll talk about this one. But when you have a metallic box, you are to ground the metallic box. That wire is called grounding conductor or bonding conductor or so forth. How to design circuits to avoid inductive heat? Very, very interesting. Um, this is why um, you cannot carry one hot conductor and put it in an EMT conduit by itself and another neutral conductor in another EMT conduit and run it to the circuit. Because there's some concept called inductive heat, you have just created yourself a heater. So we'll, get, we'll talk about this one in a second. Okay, grounded conductor. Here's the color coding for grounded conductor, guys. Very, very in, important. Like I said, when you have a circuit, your circuit is any circuit that anywhere in the world is made out of three conductors, any circuit. So here's my beautiful light here. That's my beautiful light. These all come to the light, and this guy comes into, so this is called equipment grounding conductor. This is called ungrounded conductor. This is called grounded conductor. Can you guys see that we love the ground so much in the US that we define everything by the ground, right? Everything is defined by the ground. So these terminology math must understand when you hear, when you read the code, because you don't understand the code unless you understand the terminology that we use. The first terminology, everything is defined by ground. Can you see there's a ground? So this one is ungrounded conductor, AKA the hot. That's my hot, this is my 20 amp circuit. This is grounded conductor, AKA the neutral, right? That's what you, now you understand. A lot of us understand what a hot and neutral, right? Not positive, negative. This is equivalent grounded conductor, AKA the ground. They call it the ground. If you're an electrician or an electrical designer and you call the equipment grounded conductor ground, you have no, and you consider yourself an electrician or a designer, you have no idea what you're talking about. Ground is for the public to say ground. For us, ground is, is it equipment grounded conductor? Is it ground electrical conductor? There is a whole lot of concept for ground. So the technical term by code is equipment grounded conductor, grounded conductor, ungrounded conductor, but to understand them, we call them hot, neutral, and ground. Here's your light. So the hot and the neutral guys carry the voltage. Voltage is the way we deliver power from the utility. So we're delivering power from the electrical utility into our loop. The way in order to deliver power, you need at least one hot conductor, right? So here's my hot conductor. That's the one that holding the pressure to push the power into this light to make the light work. Now, the conductor is pushing it. Now, to push it, you need a reference for that hot conductor. You need always a reference to get you the voltage, two points. The second point is called a neutral. Now, we're pushing the power through these two points into my light. Then I need the third conductor for safety, strictly for safety. Ground is strictly for safety. If something to malfunction is in this lighting fixture, as in the hot touch the frame, and instead of killing an electrician or an owner, uh, the circuit breaker will trip. Isn't that uh, a novel idea, not killing people by having an equipment ground conductor? Um, so that's basically what you're doing. Now, the grounded conductor is this guy here, identifying that conductor. A couple of things. Number one, you can use a white. It can be white or green. This is by color code, white and green in the U.S. By the way, in Europe, they use blue. So if you ever went and worked or designed a system anywhere, um, in Europe, they use blue as the grounded conductor. Go figure. Um, so the white in the U.S. we use white or gray. So completely white conductor, completely gray conductor, or three continuous white stripes on a color other than uh, other than uh, green. So it can be a black conductor with the three white um, stripes on it. These are the three ways of identifying a grounded conductor. Why do you think care? We ident you have to identify a neutral because first this was the one that we which one do we switch guys when we put a switch to turn yes we switch the hot in the u.s so first you need to know where do you want to put the switch you have to put it in the hot so right here's my switch right and why do we care? why do we care about the switch switch turn the light on and off so if i don't know which one of them is the neutral i might go switch the neutral which is violation and and safety hazard okay 
So that's basically why white, gray, or three continuous white stripes. Neutral conductor is always grounded conductor, so almost always anywhere. Any comments, guys, about the grounded conductor? Where does it sit in the circuit? How do we color code it? Does it make sense? Gray, and every time you see a gray conductor or white conductor, that's indication a grounded conductor, a.k.a. neutral. Or if you can see a black conductor with with uh, three stripes, white stripes on it, that's another indication of a grounding conductor. Any comments, any questions about the grounding conductor? So that's your grounding conductor. Where does it sit in the circuit? Here's the, how a circuit is, guys, in the US. We bring a two coloring system into your building. These are the ungrounded conductor, ungrounded conductor, both of them, ungrounded conductor, this baby here is the grounded conductor. You can see it's white. The voltage between the two ungrounded is 240. That this system is called a split phase power system. They call it split phase power system because they take one phase, is A, and um, a neutral on the high voltage, 7200 volt. They take one phase from a three phase system and they split it. Aren't they geniuses? Am I the only one who's excited about that? And the genius is how you take one, one phase and you split it into two hots. Drove me nuts when I was in your sheet, in your seats a long time ago. So they split it and they give you what we use residential, 24120 in the US. Ungrounded conductor, ground conductor. And of course, then we go to the service. Can you guys see what we'll your service conductor? You ground the neutral right at the service, must in the US. And then we uh, we pull the green conductor is the equipment grounding conductor. The term for it is equipment grounding conductor. That's it. And then the, then the neutral is white or gray or three stripes white uh, on, a, uh, on other co any color other than uh, green. And then um, then the other two conductors are typically black and red, but they can be a, they can be pink if you want them to be. As long as they're not gray or white, the ungrounded conductor, color coding, they can be anything other than green because green is for ground. They can't be white or gray because that's for neutral. Um, or they can't be white stripes on a, on, on a black because that's also for neutral. Other than that, you can use pink uh, as a phase A. But there's industry standards typically as red, black, red, blue is a color coding for one system. Any comments, guys, about this circuit? You should understand that these are two different types of loads. These are connected to 240. This is your range in the, in the residential, your dryers, your range, electrical dryers, electrical ranges, and AC units. They will be connected between the two hots. These are all your receptacles. These are your receptacles and your lights and your uh, bathroom fan and the, all the 120. If you guys does everybody understand on a 240-120 system, you can deliver two voltages to the appliances? 120 and 240. 120 is for the smaller loads, 240 is for the bigger loads. That's a major concept in, in many countries, guys, in the world, many countries. They only use one voltage in dwelling. They deliver 220 or 230 or 240 or 250. And they burn everything in the house at this voltage. So in the U.S., we split the voltage into two. Safety is the main concern. Any comments about this? So if you go to France, Adam, to work there, when I know you got to work, so you're not going to see this. You only see just one voltage, 240. Hot to neutral, done. OK, any comments, guys, about this? Please make sure you fully understand this circuit, fully understand it. Next. Uh, project, we we're not going to touch this again. We're going to move it to a three-phase system. This is called a split-phase power system, unique to the U.S. Um, split-phase power system. Okay, color coding for the ungrounded, so that's a neutral. Now, the color coding for the cables, guys, if you have a circuit with two conductors, black and a white, the white will be your neutral, the ground conductor, the black will be the hot, right? That's if you have two cables. If you have three cable, cables, then you're going to be the black and the red. These will be for your hot one and hot two. And of course, that one will be for your neutral. 
If you have a four wire cable, these are Romex or MC or AC cables. That's how they make them. If you're buying a four conductor cable, this is the color that we call it red. So here's my red, uh, black, and blue, BL for blue, and white, um, and white. So you have a red, red, black, blue, and white. This is a typical color coding for three phase 28120. But if we have, a, we're not using three phase yet, so we're using 24120. So if you have a cable, a four wire cable, it's going to be color coded this way, industry standard. For all practical reasons, they can all be red, and that's okay, or all be black, and I mean all as in the hot conductors. So the hot, so this will be a hot one, hot two, hot three, and a neutral. That will be a three-phase system, one way of doing it, if you're doing three-phase system. Any comments, guys, about the color coding for cables, if you have color coding for cables? So we know that grounded conductor must be white or gray or three stripes. Uh, white stripes, the um, the ungrounded conductor, which could be one hot, two hot, or three hots, depending on the single phase or three phase, and they can be typically these are the color coding, but it can be pink if you want it to be too. So there is no restriction there. Okay, color coding. In the NDC, guys, now in cables only, they allow allow you to re-identify the white as a black. Why would you do something like this? Two reasons. Suppose I have a heater right here. This heater is 240. And I need to bring to this heater power. And I'm using a Romex 12-2, which, by the way, your project is using heaters. That's another thing I want you to pay attention. The stairways, common stairways, required in the project that we're using to put a baseboard heaters. So remember, you're going to put a baseboard heater in all the common stairways in the apartment. So how are you going to power them? Well, it's with cables, MC or AC cable, line up cable. You're going to take, based on the size, suppose that the size was 12.2. Now 12.2 comes in only black and white as a standard. So how are you going to do? Now both, is there any neutral for this device? No neutral, it's only 240. So then that's a way we can identify the black. You put tape here on both ends identifying that black as a white, as a white as a black, and then come from here and then be on an over temperature device at 20 amp, 240 over temperature device, and off it goes. That's one way of identifying the neutral. Any comments, any questions about identifying, re-identifying the neutral, um, the, the white as a black? Only happens in cables. Can't do it like this, violation of the code. Why? Why in cables? Because cables come built this way, right? Can you pull the conductor out of the cable and put another conductor? Have you ever tried doing that? You know, it's a pain on the butt and it's violation of the code and violation of your listing anyway. Can't do that in a conduit. Can you pull a conductor out of the conduit in and out of a conduit? Yeah. So you don't need to re-identify a conduit. You cannot re-identify a conduit, but you have to re-identify in a in a cable. So that's one way. The other way, guys, when we use them as a switch loop, when we use them as part of your switch loop, I'll show you that one in a second. Okay, connecting wiring devices, like you remember, you have all your connections have to be tight. Anybody why tight? If you don't have it tight, you're going to have overheating. In electricity, guys, if your lugs are not tight, not over torque, not over tight, but tight, tight enough, not loose, not over. If you if it's too loose, it arcs. If it's also too tight, it will you'll break the conductors or the insulation of it arcs again. So you have to give it the right torque based on the manufacturer. Because of the overheating, um, so there's screw terminals, the common kind of device, kind of devices that we use, the back wiring holes. Some of the devices that we use guys have for uh, for number four, we're doing dwelling. You can backstab these devices in the back for the hot, the neutral. The hot and neutral can be backstabbed directly only for copper, only for number 14, only for solid that you can backstab. Otherwise, they have a set of screw here, a terminal where you put the conductor and you torque that conductor. Okay, so that's for uh, dwelling. <clears throat> we'll talk about this one. This is um, typical 
typical 15 amp receptacle that we use in the US, 15 amp, 120 volt receptacle. This is your hot slot. This is your neutral. If you get confused, always remember they make this smaller slot because of safety. That's it. If you're confused, which one of them is hot? To look at it there. Always remember the smaller one is is little little crack because of safety or slot here. The bigger uh, slot here is the neutral because the neutral is not hot, you know. So they can't make it bigger. And that horseshoe here is my ground. That's the identification of hot neutral ground. It will be at the, uh, it will be in um, uh, the most common receptacle that we use in the US. 15 or 20. Uh, this is happy to be 15 amps. This is a breakthrough. It tells you where the connection is. There's a few things, guys, here. It will tell you that you have silver here for the neutral, brass here um, for the copper, um, for the hot, um, and a couple of other things that are identifying it. <clears throat> Uh, pushing terminals in the back of the circuit in the back of these when you wire them you can come from the back and you can push your conductor in here without using any screw or anything else that's only ul identified that's why we don't use them in commercial ul identifying it only for number 14 listed for number 14 so number 12 <laughs> no you have to put it under the lugs and torque it should not be used on pushing terminals. What you cannot push, use there, you can't use aluminum there. You cannot use stranded, and you cannot use number 12. So the only, it's really only for solid copper, uh, number 14 solid copper. Why do they do it this way? These are the most commonly used wire in a dwelling as number 14. Most of the ones I will do with me, guys, going to be number 14. When we do the takeoff for this project in the spring, which you guys will be doing, you're going to, I'm going to take it off, Chad. What for? What cable am I using? Well, unless it says the code is 12, it's going to be what? 14. So that's how you're going to take off. Get proper grounding. <clears throat> um, the switches that we use, guys, they call talk, talk switches. Your whole article talks about them. Um, you list them as a snap switch. You hear them saying snap switch. Gentlemen and ladies, you are looking at them right there. These are called snap switches. They're functioning a circuit. A switch function a circuit is controlling that circuit. That's all. Control. The control switch is used to control the light, lighting circuits or receptacles. Um, there are, they have two labels. One of them is called AC-DC. If they have an AC-DC, then they can be used on AC or DC. Um, if they are AC DC, then you can use them in either AC or DC. You can use them with a resistive load like light, like incandescent light. If you use them inductive load like coils, you have to cut them by half. That's a major problem. Cut them by half. And motor loads not exceeding the amp rating. If you use them on motor loads, it does not exceed the amp rating. And um, marked with T for time distance loads or for horsepower limited to current rating. So if you're using them, they have to have these labels. The one that we use commonly is the AC one. Um, the filament tungsten guys have a high end rush. That's why they have to label it. That it can be used with the, with the uh, tungsten uh, filament lamps because they have a high end rush in, in energization. When you energize the lamp, it has very low, very low impedance. Very low impedance. If you have a low impedance, what happens? You put a low impedance, the current will be so high. Inrush, they call it. So that switch has to be able to handle that uh, inrush. The ones that we use mostly is AC. You know, we're using our AC, AC only. That's the one that you're looking at right there on the wall. These can be beautiful with resistive load or inductive load, like coils and, and so forth. Um, Tungus and filament lamp not to exceed the rating, so we don't have problem as long as if it's at 20 amp, don't exceed 20 amp of that. For motor loads, though, make sure you don't load in more than 80 percent. That's typically what the switch is. So if you have to switch a tiny little floor in the bathroom, and this is a 20 amp of switch, which it is, then you can't switch more than 16 amps rated motor out of that's typically what we use for switching the garbage disposal in the bathroom, guys. For switching garbage disposal, we're switching all the lights. 
Any comments, guys, about the AC uh, general snap switches? Typically 15 and 20 amp to control lighting circuits and small appliances. There's something called uh, switch loop. Switch loop, guys, is that wire that's coming from here all the way. That's my switch loop. Remember that white identified as a black? That's, remember, the two, two reasons why we do them. One, if we're feeding 240 with a cable. The second one, which is also the most common, is if we're feeding, if we're using it as a switch loop. What is a switch loop? You brought your circuit to the light as you can, and then here's my hot, and I need, here's my neutral coming to the lamp. Now, I don't, if I bring the hot to the lamp, the, the lamp will be on all the time. I need to control the hot. So what they do is they bring the hot down to the switch, and out, you switch the hot and take it back to the lamp so you can control the lamp. Now, the proper way of wiring it with cables is you bring, you tie the hot, the black to the white here, and that's where you have to re-identify the white as a black. So you bring the power on the re-identified white to supply the switch. The return from the switch must be black. If you do it other way, you're violating the code. And you guys have seen it a lot. The, uh, I always remember it. When you end up here on the lamp, you must end up with two distinctly colored um, um, conductors. One is white and one is black. You can't end up with a black and, and uh, re-identified uh, white and another re-identified white. It's confusing. So whatever you do here at the lamp, you have to end up with white here and black here. So the only way you can end up with white here and black here is what? If you make the white black here tied together and bring them to the switch and up up to um, return from the switch to the lamp. This is a very simple branch circuit wiring method. In the US and in a lot of parts of the world, guys, we switch. What do we switch? We switch the hot. We don't switch the neutral. So that's why I brought the hot down here to the switch, switched it, and took it back to the lamp. Any comments, guys, any questions about this concept? Now, Matt, when you're doing takeoff for this project in the spring, and you have a switch on the wall, and you're looping it with your spaghetti, you're going to ask yourself, what conductor, what, what size conductor do I need? You're looking at 42, right? There's hot, there's a neutral, one conductor, two conductor. The ground, we don't count. The ground all also goes without discussion. So when you say 14-2, guys, these are two conductors, hot, neutral, and a ground. 14-3, these are three conductors, hot, hot, neutral, and ground. So that's how they, they, don't, they don't count the ground. Okay, so that's your very simple circuit. Induct, inductive heat. Inductive heat, guys, if, um, if you are to put a conduit around this conductor, I don't know why would you do it. Another conduit on this conductor. So you put the hot in one conduit, the grounded conductor in another conduit. When you put a hot in a conduit, guys, you basically creating induct, you, you induce the hot. Remember the basic electricity? Every time you put a hot wire next to a metallic object, you will induce a magnetic field into the object. So imagine a conduit like this with one conductor surrounding the conduit, completely surrounding that conductor. You will induce a magnetic field into that conduit. Who cares? That magnetic field will turn into heat. That's the concept of inductive heat. You're, you're generating a, a, almost a, a transformer here. Um, but instead of transforming the energy, it converts it into heat. So that conduit becomes hot. So what's wrong with that conduit surrounding that conductor becomes hot? Are you kidding me? Enemy number one of electricity is what? Heat. So you're generating heat around a conductor that's already generating heat. So what's the likelihood that this this branch circuit or feeder will fail? Very likely that will fail. So you will contribute to the failure of your insulation and in turn the failure of your, your feeder. So long story short, you shall not, will not put one conductor in one conduit or cable. So when you put the two conductors now, you have two conductors in one cable, the hot and the neutral will cancel the magnetic field in the circuit. 
or minimize it, then they don't induce voltage into the conduit. That's the induction heat concept. That's why, and then with the hot and neutral in the conduit or cable, you have to stick also the equipment around the conductor in that cable. So when you put the three conductors, all the all the conductors of every branch circuit must be grouped together or feeder. Can I guess get you to understand this from now until we move on? Always group the conductors of the same circuit in the same conduit because to reduce the inductive heat. So that's uh, that's what the concept of inductive heat. Here's what we're looking at. So here's my lamp. Can you guys see that the hot and the neutral are in the same cable? If I have a switch, if this is going to a switch, I have two hots in the same. That's okay, acceptable. So I have one cable going to a switch, and the light is right here. Can you guys see the light? That's acceptable. So you took the hot going in, switched it going back. That's acceptable means. You don't have to have the neutral going on, going back here. Three-way switches, can you get seen a three-way switch? When you have a three-way switch, you have to have two travelers. We'll talk about this one in a second. You have to have a three-way switch, you have to have two travelers. Can you get see that? Two travelers tied to two different terminals and one common. And one common. Here's my common, right? So you have three conductors going into the cable, which these are okay, okay, okay. What you cannot do is this. Bring the hot in one cable or conduit and the neutral in a different cable or conduit. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that because of inductive heat. Inductive heat. Okay, here's a schematic. So single, uh, uh, how you wire a circuit, guys. If you bring, here's your... 15 amp circuit breaker coming out of the panel. There's your neutral bar. So you take um, this is your 14 2 with the ground is not shown. You took the neutral directly to the lamp and the hot to the switch. Well, then you have, first you have to land in the switch. So you brought the cable from the panel. This is so important, guys, when you do take off. Right now, it doesn't mean much when you lay out these. When you do take out, you brought the 14-2 cable to the switch. The hot landed on the supply side of the switch. The hot, the neutral just terminate in the hot and stop there. It's not connecting to anything. It's just um, uh, spliced here. And then you took another cable. There's another 14-2 to the light. The switched hot that come out of the switch land on one side that identified as the hot side and if the neutral will land on the other side that's identified as a neutral side that's how we wire a three uh, a lamp um via a switch any comments any question can you see that in the cable that's how we do it everybody understand so when you take this project when you take it this is 14 2 and this is my 14 2. that's how it should be can I put the switch in the neutral? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Does it violate the code? Yes. We don't switch in neutral. Safety hazard. Shock hazard. Any comments, guys, about this? So that's how we're going to be wiring it. Yeah? Oops. Um, now, this is single um, single pole switch. There is, there is a three-way switches. Three-way switches comes... Single way switch guys comes of two terminals, one terminal here and one terminal here. So you bring the hot in, you take the hot out. That's a single pole switch. Three pole switch uh, or a three way switch comes with three terminals. Always by design comes with three terminals. These two guys are called travelers. So when you wire these travelers, you just tie them together. I can't emphasize how easy that is. Can you see that? When you wire a three-way switch, piece of cake, the two travelers, you tie them together. Can I tie this traveler to this traveler? Yes. It doesn't matter which goes to which. As long as one of them goes to one and the other goes to the other. Can I get you guys thumbs up for three-way switching? Everybody knows what a three-way switch is. Three-way switch used to switch a light or lights from the two different locations. That's all. So three-way switching. So first you tie the travelers together. That's the basics. The second, if you have a light, what is the source of power? Adam, what do you want to bring your circuit, here or here? Your power. Pick. You bring the power into the switch. Should we bring it here? So I'm going to bring my power into here. Here's my 20 amp coming to the switch, right? 
So uh, then you have to bring the hot to one side. Adam pick this side, then this side has to go to where? This side has to go to the light. That's the concept of three-way switch wiring. Can you guys see that? That's the concept of three-way wiring. Now, the only thing that missing right now, anybody can tell me what's missing? The neutral. So what do you do? You take the neutral here, you have to land it in this area, just splice it. Don't do anything with it. Can you guys see that? Don't do anything with that. Move it in the same cable. Come over here, splice it here. Don't do anything with that. Can you guys see that? And then take it from here all the way to the left. Now I have a three-way switching system. Okay, looking at it here, guys. How many conductors do I need? 14, 2. How many conductors do I need? How many conductors do I need here? 14? Three. Three, thank you. How many conductors do I need here? 14? Two. Two. Now, when you're doing three-way switching, when we do lights later on, and you take off that section of the cable, you must understand when you take off that part, it's a 14-3 cable, not a 14-2. Would that make a difference in your takeoff? Yes. Any comments, guys, about the three... The two position of a three-way switch, the three-way switching. So when you have a three-way switch, to have a, to switch a light from two locations, you have to have two switches. Each one of them is specially designed to be called the three-way switch. Um, I thought we have double pole here. So they call it single, uh, single pole double throw, the technical term for it. Single pole here, here's a pole, double throw. Single pole, double throw. The, the, this one is called single pole, single throw, single pole, single throw, throws at one. These are the terms that they use with it. Any comments, guys, about wiring three-way switch? Don't you ever leave done with you without knowing how to wire one? Or ask for a refund? Okay, so here's the, if you have a four-way switch, why would you use a four-way switch, guys? A four-way switch, gentlemen, is used, used if you have to switch from more than two locations. Two location, two three-way switches. Four locations or three locations, you need a four-way switch. Here's the four-way switch, guys. It's called double pole, double throw. Double pole, double throw. And it has four terminals. Very simple. It has four terminals. The way they, the way they do them, guys, let me just show you a wiring diagram for them. You, you always use them with a single pole switch. You always use them with a single pole switch with a... What I mean, uh, with a three-way switch. So here's your four-way switch, called four-way switch. Here's your single-way switch. The way you wire them is very, very simple. You take one side here and you tie uh, this side, tie it here. See how easy that is? The travelers, the travelers from the four-way switch, one side, pick any side. From any side, they go to the travelers. Travelers here go to the treble is on this side. So the two here go to the two here. Now, what do you think? Anybody can guess where these two can go here? The two treble is here, has to land where? Here. So let me land them slightly gently here. This will come this way, and this will come this way. Now, I have just wired a four-way and a three-way switch to switch a light from three locations. The last thing left, guys, is what do you to bring the power? I'm going to bring my power here. I brought my power here. Here's my 15 amp circuit. Now I, I brought the hot, took the travelers between the two, took the travelers between the two. From here, I have my light. Done. Now this is the hot side, the wire. What's missing, Adam? For the light to work, you need a hot and a hot. A neutral. So let's start from here. I need my neutral. So you, you can't jump take the neutral. Here's my neutral is right here. You can't just grab it from here. Why? It has to be the same cable. So you're going to come from here to this switch and staple it. Come out in the same cable. Come here and splice it here. Come out in the same cable. Come here, splice it here. And uh, now I put myself into this and come out of here into my neutral. I put my neutral on this side. Oops. I put my neutral on this side. Can you guys see that? 
you have just wired a light to be switched from three location using a three-way switch and a four-way switch. I can't emphasize. Now, look at how many cables. Let's look at the cables right here. 14, 2. Right here. 14, 3. Right here. 14, 3. Right here. 14, 2. Who cares when you do take off for your friend Chad? You need to understand how many conductors in this cable. How do you understand? Well, if you have to know how to wire it in order to understand. Am I clear, guys, about this? So there is a couple of these wires at the end of the book. Must do. If you have not wired, must do. Do it by hand. Sketch it on the... Do it by hand. Sketch it. I can help you with it, too. Okay, now these are called two-pole circuit breakers. If you have a heater... And you need to control that heater, and the heater is burning at 240. Then what they use is they have two, two pole. They call them two pole. Why are they two pole? Because they split the two huts. They can have three pole, two pole, or single pole. These are two pole. This you only use them on if you are switching two huts. Combination wiring devices, they talk about combination wiring devices. This is on the same yoke, guys. I'm sure you've seen them. You can have a switch and you can have a receptacle. You can have on the same yoke, you can have one switch and one receptacle or two switches. Typically, a switch and receptacle, a GFCI and a switch. They call them combination. I don't like them. So, if you're in a situation, guys, where in the bathroom you need a receptacle and you only have a switch. You can take that yoke switch, buy yourself a combination device, a switch receptacle, yoke, plug it into the same box. Um, hopefully there's a neutral there. And hopefully there's a dedicated circuit there. The reason why I don't like them because people use them and they can violate the code. For example, like I said, if you have a light in a kitchen, no receptacle. If you go with a receptacle there, you violate the code. Why? Well, because that receptacle in the bathroom has to be on a dedicated circuit. Do you think the light circuit there was a dedicated circuit? 20 amps was not. So anyway, but you can use them where you can have a switch and a receptacle on the same yoke. Switch and receptacle on the same yoke. Um, I'm not going to go over that. The last thing, guys, is timer. We, can, we don't use a lot of timers, but uh, in our project, you're going to have an outside light, Adam, for your project. So your choices to control the outside light could be a timer or it could be um, uh, it could be a, a dusk to dawn um, um, mechanism or what do we call it, um, light sensors. So they can sense that it's dark, they go automatically. Um, timer or manual switching. So that's what the timer is. You bring the hut to it you can set it to turn on at certain time off at a different time. Any com any comments, any questions about timers or clocks they call them? We'll talk about them more when we go to the commercial project. When we go to the commercial project. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? Okay, I would like to give you guys five minutes and I want to go over a couple of pictures and then I'll let you go. Shall we? Um, we talked about this circuit, guys. We call it the split power system. The most important thing about this circuit, like I said, is knowing that these are single phase, um, uh, 120, and these are your 240 loads, 240, 120 loads. And please fully understand the difference between the two. Um, we talked about the time sheets. These are all the type of conductors that you can use types of conductors that you can use and the color coding for the conductors in a raw mix. So let's go back into, talked about this, talked about this, talked about grounding. Okay, this is interesting, guys. These are all the configuration of, uh, well, some of the configuration of the, of the receptacles that we use in the U.S. I will remind you guys with the word NEMA. And NEMA, NEMA gives a number for this. So NEMA 5-15R is a 15 stand for uh, 15 amps and r can you guys see the r stand of course anybody can guess what an r stands for receptacle 
um, if you go um, a 20 amp 120 NEMA, they call it 5-20R. The term for it is 5-20R. So when you say 5-20R for NEMA, NEMA 5-20R must go with NEMA, NEMA 5-20P. Anybody knows what the P stands for? We have receptacle, you have a plug. So that's how NEMA, National Electrical Manufacturing Association, um, rate these receptacles. You know, guys, why they do that? Because you can go from here to Texas, and you're guaranteed if, you're, if your plug is NEMA 5-2R, it will plug into, uh, if your receptacle is uh, NEMA 5-2R, uh, NEMA it will be, you're able to plug a plug into it that's 5-20P. So organization and, um, um, and standardization for the equipment so it can be used. Okay. So if your plug is uh, 250, guys, if they give it 6-15R, 6 15M240, 6 dash, oh, instead of 5, 6, yep, 6-15R instead of 5. And if it's a 20M240, which is the most common, it's called 6-20R. So can I get you guys to fully understand that NEMA gives different um, configuration, different labels um, for different receptacles, as well as different configuration. Can you guys see the, the difference between the, the HOTS in each one of these? How the HOTS is different. Look at the neutral is different. This is a 240. And here's my HOTS. Here's my, both of these are HOTS. Um, and 250, 240. This is these. Both of these are HOT. My 6 20, 20 M 240. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions <clears throat> about the configuration. What they don't want you to do is they don't want you to plug a 15 amp uh, 120 into a 15 a 15 amp plug 120 into a 15 amp um, receptacle 240. Does that make sense? The configuration. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that this makes sense. People will be calling up on you guys to specify NEMA receptacles. You might think this is cool. We know that one. I was involved in projects where, what if you have a, you need a 200 amp plug, right? There are 200 amp. They make 200 amp plugs for 480, 377. So you need to know what the NEMA size for these. So they use them into generators. They can pull these generators on a trailer, plug them into a lift station. If you lose the power and you start to generate, your lift station is up and running. So that's uh, um, the concept behind it. Um, All the receptacles, guys, that we use in the building in this day and age, uh, because of 2014, all receptacles have to be tamper resistant. Can you get CTR? So all the receptacles that you have to use in the building right now have to be tamper resistant as of 2008. I think 2008. Tamper resistant. You can't use in the tamper resistant ones. This is not a tamper resistant. This that little thing that plugs in here. And in order for you to engage this receptacle, you must simultaneously push two things in the hot and neutral. Safety. So kids don't uh, have paper clips. Put the paper clips right into the hot and electrically themselves. So be aware to all the receptacles have to be there. Um, for switches, guys, your switches can be different sizes, different types from 15 to 20 to 30, um, different type of recept switches that you can buy. Um, switch with a cover. If you have a switch outdoor, you have to have a cover for it. Um, we talked about the induction heat. If you are to take, uh, like you guys will be taking feeders from your apartment into the swimming pool, you are to group all these conductors together for inductive heat too. So you can group them together because they cancel the magnetic field of each other. So you can't separate them of the same circuit. So if this is if this is hot, this is neutral, this is ground, you're supposed to group them together, closer proximity. Inductive heat again. Um, look what you cannot do, Karen. You cannot put the black and the white. Look at that. The way I wired this system, I end up with the black conductor and the white conductor doing nothing. I'm carrying a hot in one cable and a neutral on another cable. That's complete violation of the NEC code because of inductive heat. Does that make sense? You can't do that. So that's violation uh, of the inductive heat. We looked at this one, guys. 
So there's a couple of wiring methods that's um, really interesting when you do wiring. I can't emphasize guys, please look at these, please. Like I said, if you bring the circuit <coughs> to the light right here, then you have to have a loop that will switch loop. Um, and then you can uh, either, in this case, we identify it. Um, you have to, in 2011, guys, the code start requiring you in 2011. I don't think they're showing the white conductor. There's a white conductor coming here and sitting right in here. That's my white conductor. Can you see that? In 2011, the NDC code book start requiring you, if you are wiring with cables, to bring a neutral conductor to every switch. That was completely changed in 2011. Only if you are wiring with cables, only if you're um, if if the walls are closed, sheetrocked, um, no access to the top or the bottom to the sheetrocking, you are required to bring a neutral conductor to the switch. Can I just get you to understand that? Now, because of that change, Adam, that happened in 2011, every switch loop like this has to be 14.3. In the past, we, we, we could have gotten away with what? We could have gotten away with 14.2. Every one of these have to be 14.3. Every one of these have to be 14.3. Can I just get you guys to understand how this is a major change? Now, all the... Uh, loops, the switch loops that you have to do, they have to be 14.3. Why? Because the code says, I want you to be, to bring a neutral here. How about we identifying the neutral that we talked about a second ago? You're going to kiss it goodbye. Why? Because you need a neutral here. You can't use the white as an identified hot. Okay, so a couple of um, wiring methods, guys. Here's another wiring, and I, I can't emphasize how nice these are. The schematics as well as the actual wiring. Look at we came guys to the switch. We brought we brought a cable to the switch. We tabbed the hot. Can you guess the line side of the hot? Can you guess the port of the line side? And we went the switched hot is the um, is a red. So a switch we brought the switched hot and a neutral to this light so I can switch it and we continue with an unswitched hot and a neutral all the way to another receptacle, another receptacle. That's how you can uh, feed a light and a receptacle from the same circuit if you bring the power to the switch. Any comments, any questions? So important, guys, that you know that. So that will be 14. This will be 14.2. What do you guys think this would be? 14.1, Adam? 14.3, going up here, right? How about the cables coming here? 14.2. When you start laying out these spaghettis that you're doing right now, for receptacles, it's not a big deal, but when it comes, guys, to lights, and you have three-way switches and switches, you're going to be using not just 14.2, 14.3, three conductors. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this wiring method? Any comments, any questions about this wiring method? Karen, you guys know how to do it? Good. Derek, so that's your um, wiring methods. We talked about, guys, three-way switches, and we wired that one a second ago for you. Uh, snap switches. Here's a, an actual wiring for three-way switches. We have never wired a three-way switch. Um, like I said, guys, the travelers, can you guys see the travelers always, if you, under, if you want to understand the three-way switches, you have to understand that the travelers, the travelers have to be tied to the travelers. Any comments, guys, about tying the travelers to the travelers over the three-way switch? Travelers, these two terminals, to do this. if I bring this one on a test, would you guys be able to wire it? Draw that. Right? The key point for it is these two here will go with these two. That's really it. And one will go to the source, and one will go to the load. And then the neutral pass right through. The neutral have to go to all of them. As of 2011, guys, the neutral has to go to every switch. The neutral has to go to every switch. Can you guys see that? We bring it in, out, traveler to traveler. With it, you are rec it's recommended to identify these two, like make them red, red, to When you look at them, the red, red, they are travelers. They call them travelers between the two three-way switches. Okay, so here's another application, guys, of... Uh, 
another application, we will bring the circuit to the light. If you bring the circuit to the light, this is as of 2011, you are looking at 14.4, and you're looking at 14.3 here, and you're looking at 14, um, 14 two here, and you're looking, so can you see that? Um, from here between these two switches, I need two for the travelers, I need one for the switch and one for the neutral. I need four conductors. That was change of 2011. Can you guys see, I want to bring your attention to the neutral. What do you think the neutral is sitting doing here? Nothing. As of 2011, they want you to put a neutral on every switch. The idea behind it, Adam, is if you decided to change this three-way switch into a dimmer, which you can, you need a neutral for the electronics of the dimmer to work. So you can tie the dimmer, give the new, the dimmer has electronics on it, needs some work, some um, 120. So that will get you the 120 for your dimmers or occupancy sensors or so forth. Any comments, guys, about wiring three-way switches by bringing that so source? This is where the circuit is going to be coming from, right in here. My 20 amp circuit coming in here to the light. If you bring the circuit to the light and you have three-way switches, Matthew, you are dealing with 14, uh, four, 14, four, four conductors, which they make them. Okay, now if you're bringing your, and these are all guys different scenarios of bringing, where would you bring your circuit when you're doing, if you're bringing your circuit to a junction box, you can see here, um, you still have, you still have to bring here to, you're bringing it right to the light, basically. Um, so you need, you're lo looking at 14.4 here, and you're looking at 14.4 here, and you're looking at the source 14.2. I can't emphasize, guys, look at these, study them, understand them. You, as an estimator, project manager, you must know that if you are to bring, you have two three-way switches coming to the light, and you're bringing the circuit to the light, these two has to be 14.3. 14.4. Why 14.4? You need two travelers, you need a switched hot, and you need a neutral to sit there waiting to be used in the future. Same thing. So you can see this is cabbed neutral, sitting doing nothing, cabbed neutral. That was changed in 2001, 2011. Before 2011, before 2011, this would have been 14.3, and this would have been 14.3. Can you see that? Do you see how, why keeping up with the most updated code is a big deal? So that's your wiring methods here. Uh, th three and four way switches, we talked about that one. We wired one of them. Okay, here's a, a nice wiring method, guys, when you're using a three and a four way switches. Three and a four way switches, and all the way up, and switch them. You don't want to work it now? There you go. Okay, so you can see, guys, I have um, a four-way switch. I don't know if you can see it right in here, my four-way switch, my three-way switch, and my three-way switch. Now, Matthew, this is how you're going to show it in your plans. If you want to do a three-way switch, you're going to put an S and three next to it, or an S and a four next to it, or just an S with a slash right through it, the way they do it. Um, okay, now we're bringing the power to one of them. Then the, I always say, guys, to understand this one really you have to understand that you need the travelers, two conductors dedicated to the travelers. Can you guys see that? Two conductors dedicated traveler to traveler. So you can, the two terminals here have to land, to, uh, at these terminals of these, it doesn't matter. These two terminals have to land at these two terminals. Very clear. Then, then this terminal here and this terminal here, your choice. One will go to the hot, and then if this went to the hot, this must go to the load which it went to the load. So that's the hot, um, non-grounded conductor distribution. Then force, then you have to bring the neutral. So you bring the neutral to the, this box, neutral to this box, neutral to this box, and all the way to the light. And you're looking at schematics of it as well as actual wiring. Any comments, guys, about wiring, turning light on and off from three locations? What if I want to turn it off from four locations? Five locations. 
What do you guys do if you want to add if they turn off from another location? You know what they do? They just put another three-way switch, another four-way switch right here. Can you guys see that? Another four-way switch right, right in the middle here. If so, that will be one, two, three, four locations. In another location, another four-way switch here. Another location, another four-way switch here. So you just start adding four-way switches. I can turn a light from a million locations by keep adding a four-way switch in between a two uh, three-way switches. Typically three locations, the, the max, but I've seen it were four locations. So if you if you need to switch a light from four locations, you need two uh, four-way switches and two three-way switches. That will give you four locations. Any comments, guys? Any questions about the wiring? Comments, questions about the wiring? Is this too much for you guys? Is that too much information? Have you, do you have you done it, Derek? Have you done all these wiring? Some of them, okay. Adam, I know you guys have done some of them. When it comes, to, we're not going to be wiring guys, but when we when it comes to take off and estimating, you must understand how it's put together, how the system is put together, because you're going to be. Um, you will be asked to take it off. So you can't take off something like that and set. Look at this. If you bring the source power, guys, this is my 14.2 coming in. Because I have three-way switches, um, I'm almost forced to, can you guys see? And I have to carry the neutral. Look at my neutral. My neutral, my neutral had to be carried to all the switches as of 2011. Then I'm forced with 14. Here I have to do 14.4. 14, 4, why? Two travelers, one switched hot, one neutral, 4. This one here, I need 14, 3, why? Because the neutral is already here. I don't need a traveler. Travelers that don't in, reach this point. They only need the switched hot right in here. Any comments, guys? Any questions about wiring a three-way and a four-way switches from by bringing the uh, home run to the light you can bring the home run to the light you can bring a home run to the switch there's so many ways of when you wire guys you can bring your home run right here which i prefer we can bring the home run right here and bring it down to here so there's, there's different ways of, of, of wiring yeah depending upon the situation there is something called two pole circuit breakers. These are will give you guys two pole circuit breakers. A two pole circuit breaker they can they, they can turn two lights coming from two circuits at the same time. So here's my 20 amp, my 20 amp. Can you guys see that these are actually turning two lights from two different circuits at the same time? This becomes so powerful, Adam, my friend, when we do um, commercial commercial uh, wiring. And you need to bring phase A here and phase B on, on the same switch. They have to be two pole circuit breakers. These are called these are your two pole two pole circuit breakers. Here's one pole. Here's another pole. If they're not two pole circuit breaker, you will short them. This is not a four way switch. This is a two pole circuit breaker. Why two pole? You can bring two circuits to it, to the same switch. Three pole, three circuits, the same switch. You can also use two pole to switch the 240. Remember how we said if you're if you're doing it, you can switch 120 or 240 loads from the same switch. There's a couple of um, with switches, guys. A couple of indicators that you can have. There's something called this. Um, Pilot lights. So, so for pilot lights, you can have a, a, a switch. So look at this switch. There's a light in series with this. Two lights in series. So when the switch is off, this light will be on. When the switch is on, then you have a zero voltage right across this light. Then the light is on. So that will give you um, an indicator. You can see it on the top with the switch right in the top. It will indicate the location of the switch. So if I'm coming into a dark room, I walk in, I can see the tip of the switch is dead. So I can see this is the switch, turn it on, and the light will go on. These are special switches that you don't have to worry too much about that, bringing the power in and out. 
Any comments about these guys indicate, indicating lights? So called indicating lights that you can use. <clears throat> Okay, so. so that's to indicate the location of the switch. This one, guys, is to indicate that the load is on. So what we, what we use this one, guys, this time, and, and all these are built into the switch. You don't have to worry too much about it because you bring a switch that's with a pilot, pilot light, typically all this is one in the switch. So if this light in the attic, what happens is if the light in the attic, and you don't know if the light is on and off, what they do is they have a pilot, a switch here, pilot light on a switch. So if the light here is on, this means the attic light is on. If the light is off here, this means the attic light is on. So it gives you an indication that the load is up and running. It's like the one they use with machines. When the machine is running, they have a green light is on. When it stops, a red light is on. Exactly, an indicating light, pilot light, pilot lamp. Different type of switches, guys, and configuration of switches and receptacles. Here's the one that you can have a combo of a switch and um, a switch and receptacle in the same yoke, three switches in the same yoke. Um, these guys, you can plug them in, plug a switch, a receptacle, a switch, um, build your own system, commonly used in other places. <clears throat> If you're dealing with conduit, if you're wiring with conduits, guys, I can't emphasize, if you're wiring with conduits, you do not need to bring a neutral to the, uh, to the switches if you're wiring with conduit. Um, in this case, we have a neutral, but you don't have to bring a neutral to a switch if you're wiring with conduit. In this case, we do have a neutral anyway. Three-way switches. Okay, so here's different different configuration, guys, with wiring with conduits. You can see we're bringing the source here, feeding a lamp, <coughs> and feeding a receptacle from it. Um, grounding a switch, you can see where the equipment grounding conductor come here and tie to the switch. Uh, receptacles. Here's another way of grounding, guys. You bring the equipment grounding conductor, tie it to the box, and tie it to the equipment grounding conductor to, uh, slot, equipment grounding conductor screw. Here's also another, another way of grounding. I can't emphasize, guys, we're not training you to be electricians. The more you know, the better you will be. So this is how they do it in the field. You can see they gr group all the grounding, equipment grounding conductor together, and you take that fitting grounding um, type wire connector, and they go on the ground the receptacle ground your receptacle all these are fittings that you can use with grounding again look at them as your own way pigtails that you can use to do grounding um when the move is is what grounding a grounding clip where you group them all together and you attach it to the box now you're grounding that box um you cannot look at this violation, guys. My circuit breaker is 20 amp. This is number 12, but my conductor in this conduit or cable is number 14. You cannot mix and match conductors. You can't on a 20 amp circuit. You can't put a 14 conductor, 14 conductor anywhere in the circuit. I had uh, first experience with that. Timers. This is your timers. You can bring. I don't know. This is a timer, guys. Um, you can bring a line. So here's you bring your line, here's your load coming out. So it could be a two pole timer. Here's your hot, here's your neutral, the line. And then you take the load out of here um, and you can set it up as man it's a manual timer to turn on and off at certain times. Electronic timers. Electronic timers have multiple f feeds. You can bring two hots to them um, and control multiple things, guys. I don't know the wiring diagram. So you can look at the wiring diagram here. You can bring, um, you can program it to do a lot of other things. We talked about the rating. Here's um, a table, guys, I would like you just to pay a little bit of attention to. This is a color coding for all the conductors. Um, if your conductor is number six and smaller, Matt, your conductor is number six and smaller, they must be color coded. No question asked. Your conductor is larger than number six, number four larger, you can color them in the field. Did you guys hear me so powerful, this concept? Any conductor, Number six or smaller, color code. It has to be color coded like this. Any conductor larger than number six, which is four or larger, 
you can bring a black conductor, number four, and put a white tape on it and make it a neutral. So that's that's where you can color code them in the field. Um, that's the concept of, or you can bring a black conductor and color code it to be green. Okay, so that's um, the wiring methods. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So on the test, I could give you something like this, guys, and I say wire it. Okay. Shall we do one of them together? Shall we wire this together? One of them, please. So I'm going to go right here. My circuit breaker is coming. The source is coming here. Here's my 20 amp. Here's my hot, and here's my neutral. OK? So, um, so lamp, lamp. I have two lamps, and I have a switch. I have two lamps and a switch. So so how, how would you wire this, guys? Any suggestion? You're going to wire these. How do you wire them? So first of all, there are two lamps. The first thing you need to do is a neutral, right? Every one of them need a neutral. Here's a neutral. Every one of them need a neutral. And you are to go bring the neutral to the switch and land it here. That's it. First thing, bring the neutral to every light. And you have to bring it to the switch and let it sit there. Now, I need to bring the hot from here all the way to the switch so I can switch it. The hot, okay? So here's the hot, the black, come from here to here, from here to here, from here to the switch. Now I brought the hot to the switch. After I bring the hot to the switch, I need to bring it back, switch it, I switched it, and bring it back to all the fixtures, here to here, here to here, here to here. So this is how you wire two lights to be switched from the same switch. Any comments, any questions? Crime against the humanity. If you leave done, we're not knowing how to do that. The electrical humanity. <laughs> any comments, guys, about this? Any comments? So that's um, easy wiring. Let's go to get a three-way switch if I can. I'm going to do this three-way switch. Let me see how it works. Uh, these are go all in the back, guys, of your book. Let's do the four-way switch. One interesting. Here you go. I'm going to do the four-way switch here. And then I'll let you uh, go. Okay. So look what we have here, guys. We have uh, we have a three-way switch, a four-way switch, a three-way switch, and a lamp. Okay. And they made it very nice for you guys that you can um, you can they're color coding them. Any suggestion, guys, where to start? What's the easiest way to start? Any suggestion? Okay, start with a neutral. Shall we start with a neutral? Now my neutral is coming, here's my neutral. My neutral is this point here. So I'm gonna go my neutral right in here and take my neutral here. My neutral have to come to this point. Out of this point, it's gonna come here. My neutral is coming also landing here. And out of here is gonna go here. And out of here is going to go land right here. So I brought the neutral, guys. I brought my neutral to every device and to every light. Good point. What's the next start? I brought my neutral. How about the travelers? Shall we do the travelers? Okay, so let's do the travelers. Um, I'm going to use the, the, here's the traveler. I'm going to use the red. Here's traveler one and the blue as my traveler. Traveler, traveler. Can you guys see that? Uh, red and blue. Here's my red. Here's my blue as traveler. And here's my red. And here's my blue as traveler. So I brought my travelers from every three-way switch to every four-way switch terminals, right? What's left? The switched hot. Okay? Now the switched hot, this guy, is going to come right here to the black. It has to go through this box, so it's just going to pass through the box and go right here, and it's going to pass through the box here, just pass through and go to here. Um, uh, I want to, not, not the black, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring it to the red here, 
and from here it's going to go all the way to the left. Now that's my switch hot. How about the actual hot coming to the switch? The last thing you need to do is bring the hot into the other side of the switch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just wired uh, four switches, two three-way and one four-way switch to turn a single light from uh, three locations, three locations. I can't emphasize, start with your neutral, bringing it to every one of them. Then go to your travelers, bring the traveler to the travelers, right? I picked the, the red and the black. Could I have used the black and the blue? Yeah, I could, you could have used any of these colors, really. But if you use uh, a red and blue, stick with the red and blue all the way through for the travelers. Okay. The reason why I use... Um, okay, so that's switched, switched and we brought it all the way back to the light. I'm just asking for the, the hot side where it's going to the lamp, wouldn't it just be if we switch to the red, to the red line next to the lamp, and then back to the lamp, the black one will go all the way back to the, to the uh, 14 3 or the 14 3 on the other end? Absolutely. Another way, a better way. Absolutely. I, yeah, it just looks like Absolutely. Connected there. I was because of the color coding, it makes more sense. You're absolutely right. It is to take the black, just pass through and go all the way here. So I brought my black here, and then all I have to do now is from here to here. Absolutely. That's a better way. Absolutely. Then you continue with the same color coding. Then you continue with the same color coding. We went black all the way, black, and then um, our red was used as a switch top, which is, since, we, then, since this is black, and black, we continue with the hot conductor being the black. It, it's a better design. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments, any questions? Good call. So there's a few of these guys wiring in the back of the book. Please, please make sure you, you, um, you go through them. Um, and I'll be able to help you with them. So that's that's basically it in terms of the wiring. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? That's all what I have for you. Um, what I'm hoping guys to do is to do the whole circuiting today and uh, look at your stuff. And I don't have anything else in, in the pipe for you. So...